Welcome to this Medicine Masterclass on Neurofibromatosis. We'll be discussing the differences between Neurofibromatosis Type 1 and Type 2. Neurofibromatosis Type 1, an autosomal genetic condition, also known as Van Recklenhausen's disease, is associated with renal artery stenosis and pheochromocytoma. In this condition, patients have cafe au lait spots, usually more than six. These are flat, coffee-coloured patches of skin which increase in number and size over time. There is freckling in the skin folds, particularly the axilla, groin, neck and the samamri area. They also have neurofibromas, more than two. These are small violaceous nodules, gelatinous in texture and nature, and these are firm and clearly demarcated neurofibromas, which are essentially nerve projections and if pressed can cause paresthesia. Patients will also have uh, two or more leash nodules. These are small brown hamatomas on the iris, best seen with a slit lamp, and optic gliomas can also develop in the eyes. They may also have bone lesions, sphenoid dysplasia, uh, or cystic bone lesions. And here is a patient demonstrating a number of neurofibromas, leash nodules, as well as cafe au lait spots. To manage patients, this is a multidisciplinary team effort involving the geneticist, neurologist, potentially surgeons to excise uh, some troublesome lesions, but not all, ophthalmologists and physiotherapists. Blood pressures are regularly monitored due to the association with pheochromocytoma and patients uh, are advised genetic counselling. Compare this to neurofibromatosis type 2. This is also an autosomal genetic condition, but it's associated with meningiomas. In this, patients also have cafe au lait spots, the flat coffee coloured patches of skin, which increase with number and size over time, but tend to have fewer cafe au lait spots than those with, uh, the, with those patients with neurofibromatosis type 1. Importantly, this condition is associated with bilateral vestibular schwannomas, which are seen on MRI and CT. These characterize neurofibromatosis type 2, and patients can become symptomatic with hearing loss, and this can be associated with tinnitus and vertigo. And albeit the tumors can be benign, they can compress other intracranial structures, leading to neurological manifestations. Patients also have nodular neurofibromas, which are firm and clearly demarcated, and can cause paresthesia when compressed. Younger patients may develop juvenile posterior subcapsular lenticular opacity, which is a form of cataract seen in neurofibromatosis type 2. The management is also a multidisciplinary team. Patients should undergo regular hearing tests, and if an MRI brain scan is negative by 30 years of age, this implies that the gene for neurofibromatosis type 2 has not been inherited. Um, uh, not been inherited. Patients who have schwannomas may require neurosurgical intervention. So in this masterclass, we've compared and contrasted the key findings of neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2. Thank you for attending this medicine masterclass.